Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Stephanie. This is the week 42's weekly wrap up for October the 13th through the 19th. As I said, this is the weekly wrap up for week 42. We are almost through the year of 2019, you guys. It has gone by super fast. I've read so many books, and this week did not fail me. I read 10 books this week, and it was a busy week. I started a Patreon, so if you guys are willing and wanting to help me out with uh, more videos and special videos for over there for like behind the scenes and vlogs and some of my just random random ramblings ramblings uh check out the description box so you guys can go to that link for that page over there it is in the construction phase of it so hopefully by the time you guys see this video i will have something up over there but just know that it is coming in the next coming uh days for some uploads over there either some like i said ramblings or whatever but uh yeah and behind the scene and vlogs which i have been doing quite a few i have a whole bunch of footage to put together for you guys uh for a review a thon vlog that i started on wednesday and i'll be ending on like tuesday i think i'm gonna break it down and uh put this put that vlog exclusively over there. Uh, so if you guys want to go check that out, uh, and support me over there, that'd be a uh, great, uh, I will continue to do my regular videos here on this channel for Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays. And yeah, okay, housekeeping is done. Let's get to the books that I read last week. Last week I started the week off by reading Venom by D. Garcia. I placed this in dark romance. Oh my goodness, this is a fairy tale retelling for Peter Pan. I give it five stars. I give it four Steam fans. I read it as an arc. As I said, it is part of the sinister fairy tales collection that is going to contain 17 books and I really really hope that I get arcs for all 17 of the books. They are standalone books of fairy tale retellings but they do have a bit of a connection from what I understand. It is 17 authors working together to give this sort of overall arc of a story and let me just tell you this starts off with a super bang. Oh my goodness. So I did not know that this story was going to be Peter Pan retelling until I really got into it. I knew that the characters' names were going to be Hook and Tinksley. Um, so then as I started to read into it, I was like, okay, then Peter is mentioned in it, but he has a very different role. In this story, Tinksley, we know, is a fairy, but she is not just a fairy. She is part fae. And... Ooh wee does Peter do a number on her? I don't want to get too much into it. Uh, we do have Captain Hook who is ruling uh, Ravenwood and I don't want to give too much away because there are so many surprises in this retelling and reimagining because it is just so good. It was so good. I was like on the edge of my seat. I think I devoured it within a day and I posted pictures over on Instagram looking all sorts of crazy because it was mine blowing. I really, really loved all the dark and twisted and crazy things that happened in it. All the extra takes. I was never really a big Peter Pan fan. Um, like I haven't read the original book or anything like that. I have watched a couple of the movies um, like Hook and um, I didn't watch the new Peter Pan. No. But um, I've, you know, I know Peter Pan. I know the story of Peter Pan. And it gets crazy. This reimagining is absolutely amazing. And I can't wait to find out uh, what happens next. Well, their story is done. Uh, Peter, Tinksley, and Hooks. And the folks uh, at Ravenwood, I think... I think their part of the story is done, but like I said, I believe there's a more that's going to happen, and we may see Ravenwood later on in one of those other 16 books that's in this series, or in this collection. Uh, I just can't wait. I can't, I can't talk enough about this. I'm really excited to read this series. 
The next book that I finished was Straight Up Irish, which is Murphy's Brothers number one by Megan Vernon. I placed this in New Adult. I give it five stars. I give it three Steam fans, and I listen to it on audiobook. I have actually had these books for a little while. I won the entire Murphy Brother series uh, from Megan a couple months ago. I just hadn't gotten a chance to read it yet. I found this over on Hoopla Digital and was like, I need to read this. So I read it and I am so happy I did. So this book follows Fallon and Connor. Connor, his father just died and he placed in his will that his three boys had to find love and um, in order to gain control of their family co uh, company that they've had. So this is a marriage of convenience, uh, story. It's set in Ireland, which, ah, uh, I love books that, uh, that are set in Ireland. Just love them, love them, love them. And this narrator was so on point with her Irish accent. I was just here for it. I mean, maybe it's, you know, stereotypical Irish accent, but it melted my panties and I was there for it. Loved it, loved it, loved it. The next book that I finished was Unforgettable, Indulgence Number 3 by Alethea Roaming. I place this in Erotica and I give it five stars. I give it five humongous, so many more blushing, panty melting, steam fans. Oh my goodness. Ha! This is the third book in the Indulgence series. You don't have to read the other two books to enjoy this one. It is a standalone of sort, and the only connection is that the Doctor is the same from this book as it is in the other two books. So like I said, you don't have to read any, you don't have to read the other two books to just love this one. Oh my goodness, it is so much fire. In this one, we have Margie, who is the secretary, um, I guess you could say executive assistant to the doctor that the therapist that has been taking care of some people she has been transcribing um all of the patient's works and everything like that so that has her brain sort of looking to explore into something different into something more and she ends up meeting Lucas, whose daughter ends up running into her in the grocery store asking for strawberries. She's such a cutie. But Lucas loses his wife and had been using the therapist that Margie works for. And she suggests to him that, you know, if he need, ever needs a chance or ever needs to talk about his loss, that he goes back to the doctor. Well both of them end up talking to the doctor and both of them go and start on this journey of one for re-exploration into something that they were already into and one into exploration of something that they had only been thinking about and oh, it's super hot it's super hot now I will say if you're not into safely exploring the world of BDSM um, or if you if that's just not a topic that you want to dive into I would shy away from this book if you are looking to safely and um, I guess on your own explore through words this is an amazing book to do that with because yes Yes, so many yeses. So just yes. Whew. So hot. <laughs> so hot. The next book that I finished was Awk Weird by Avery Flynn. This is Ice Knife number two. And I placed this in New Adult. Whew. I give it 4.5 stars. I give it five Steam fans. I read this one as an arc as well. This is a sports romance. Ugh, yes. And it actually started off my review a thon uh impromptu challenge because I got this arc through NetGalley and Review a Thon was something that I really enjoyed over the summer, so I decided to institute it again and I'm going to be trying to clean out my NetGalley arc uh dashboard. Hmm. Get my percentage and ratio up and everything like that. Um I will explain that in another video though. So uh, this one our main characters are Tess and Cole. Tess is a flower shop owner. She loves flowers. She is 
awkward, she's nerdy, she knows facts and craziness, um, she, when she gets into awkward situations, she just likes to, like, spit knowledge, and it's absolutely hilarious. Cole is the buttoned-up hockey player in which, you know, he likes things on a schedule. Like, this happens, this happens, this happens. He's had an on and off again relationship with uh, the coach's daughter, I believe it was. And they both attend a wedding that one of the Ice Knights is part of. And they get weddinged. So they hook up and Tess ends up pregnant. That is not a spoiler. It is on the cover. She is actually pregnant on the cover, and it actually says it in the blurb, which you guys know I don't read, but the cover says that she's pregnant. So, and this is their sort of journey of mixing and mingling together because of their so very spectrumed uh, natures. One's on this end, one's on that end, and trying to find their middle ground. It was so much fun. It was cute, and it was sweet, and I just really, really enjoyed it. Uh, the only flaw that I found was that it's part of the series, and there was only a slight mention of the other... Um, Ice Knight that we already met in Parental Guidance, uh, but that's okay. That's all right. Uh, and there were some little, some other little things that kind of annoyed me about the, the relationship, but that's okay. That's okay too. I'm still giving it, you know, high stars. And of course, over on Goodreads, it says it's five stars. So, you know, I still really enjoyed it and think you guys should go check it out because it is super cute. And I can't wait for book number three because book number three sounds like it's going to be amazing too. The next book that I finished was The Headmaster by Tiffany Reese. I have no real clue where I'm going to place this in categories. I'm pretty sure I put it as gothic, as erotic, as romantic, as um, almost paranormal. Um, I, I just don't know. There's so much that goes on into this. So much. So, so very much. I give this book five stars. I give it 3.5 Steam Fans. Because, like I said, there's so much that goes into this. So this story follows Gwen, who needs a fresh start. So she sees that there is some openings at this school in the mountains <clears throat> called the Marshall School. And it's an all-boys school. They need a literature teacher. Well, she ends up getting into an accident. And that's all I'm going to tell you. She ends up meeting the headmaster, Edwin. And the two of them have a bit of a relationship, some sexy toms, some, whew, yes. Um, and the boys are great. Uh, there's just so much that goes along with it. I was on the edge of my seat through the entire audiobook. By the way, I did listen to this on audiobook. And I just devoured it. It was so good. And I was just mind blown by the end of it. I read this with Brie from Brie Hill, and we both were like, what? Did, you, did that just happen? Yes, it did, and it was amazing. The next book that I finished, or didn't finish, was Saving Everest by Sky Chase. I placed this in Young Adult Hard Hitting, and I actually DNF this at the 50% mark, and that was actually due to the formatting of the ARC that I received. Uh, this was a net galley uh, arc that I received, and the formatting was absolutely horrible. You know it's, it's bad when... Whew, the formatting throws you out of a story and you just can no longer read it. So I got to 50%. I am still giving it two stars. I think there may have been one Steam fan. Maybe there was a friendship or that should have been. I don't know. Nah, maybe. Uh, so it's getting one. But the whole premise to the story is really good. It, it needs to be sort of said. This is a debut author. This is also a black author. Um, so it saddens me to say that it just, just wasn't good. Uh, it was really, really slow in forming what needed to be said. So Everest is a football player. He's super popular. But then there's content warning. Uh, he attempts suicide. He ends up going back to school. And he ends up meeting Beverly in the library that isn't used because she is sort of the outcast, the quiet, shy black girl in this all-white school. Whew. I, 
it was just super slow. It didn't feel like it was going anywhere. And then the formatting, I just couldn't do it any longer. The next book that I read was The Assistant by Marnie Mann. I am a little hesitant to place this in just straight contemporary because there's so much that goes on with the story. So much that goes on with the story. I'm still mind blown from this story. I give it five stars. I give it three steam fans. I listen to it as an audiobook. And this book follows Tess, Emerson, and Charlotte. Emerson and Jess are married. They hire Charlotte as the as their assistant, as his assistant, because Jess's father passed away. There is a lot of flashbacking that happens within the story. There is Jess before, Jess after, Charlotte before, Charlotte after. There is no Emery before or after, but whew, I listened to the end of the story two times. I can't wait to get a paperback copy of it so that I can reread it again because I'm still mind boggled about what happened. Just mind blown. Don't know what is going on. It is so good. It's had me at the edge of my seat the entire time. This cover just doesn't, don't, don't judge this one by its cover because you think you know what's going on. And I thought I knew. I was like, ooh, I don't like this character because she gonna be doing this and she gonna be doing that. No. No. No, 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 no. That is not what happened. And, whew, yes. Go into this blind. Don't read any blurbs. Just know that it's gonna have you at the edge of your seat and it's gonna be a crazy, crazy ride. The next book that I read was The Major's Welcome Home by Tessa Bailey. I placed this in Contemporary. This is actually a reread for me. Um, I still give it four stars, but this time I give it 4.25 stars. It still gets four Steam fans. It was a reread, like I said, but this time it was on the podcast of Read Me Romance. Read, read me romance. And uh, I think the narrator Lauren Sweet did an amazing job at bringing these two characters to life. I mean, I had them in my head of how I thought they were going to speak, but she did a really good job at changing that and increasing my rating for this story. The story follows Kenna and Beck. Kenna is the general's daughter and Beck is a major that is coming back to the States after being deployed for six years, which is a crazy amount of time. They, he is a virgin, so you get a male virgin here, which is amazing. His, the reasoning for his being a virgin is kind of, eh, eh, but I can sort of see it because from the small town that he came from before he joined the military, uh, you know, hometown boys kind of do that sometimes uh and you know it, it's all good kenna being the general's daughter doesn't usually you know go after any of the soldiers because they they all have this sort of standoffish thing from her you don't mess with the general's kids uh so yeah this is their story it's hot it's steamy and lauren did an amazing job at reading this into uh an audiobook the next book that I finished was Not the Girl You Marry by Andy J. Christopher. I placed this in Contemporary. I give it 4.25 stars. I give it three Steam fans. I read it as an ARC for Review-a-thon, and I really enjoyed this, uh, narrate this, uh, wow. This story is a written by a black or biracial author, so she's going into the black category, even though she specifically states that she is biracial, and that is the label that she likes to uh, have placed upon her. It's neither side, and this book follows sort of that sort of uh, feeling, because Hannah is a biracial uh character and she's an event planner. I couldn't get that out. She's an event planner. She has some self-esteem issues, especially when it comes to having her racial identity sort of known. And it is covered in this book. This book does uh, sort of follow or have a take on the How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. If you don't know what that movie is, it is a story about a journalist who in this story is male, Jack, uh, that he, Jack actually is a how-to guy. I'm sort of, I'm, I'm so tongue-tied for this one. Okay, so 
Hannah is an event planner. She doesn't like men at this point in time. Well, she does like men. She just thinks they're all assholes. Um, and she's having some self-esteem issues with her biracialness and knowing which sort of place she fits into because her last boyfriend was a douche and, you know, she wasn't black enough for him uh, because she likes to balance both of her sides of her heritage and not really claim either one more than the other, which is cool. I, I appreciate that. And Jack is the how-to guy for a magazine or newspaper, what have you. So he has some mommy issues, some family issues, and he decides to write a story about losing a girl because his bros are kind of douches. And they're doing the whole right swipe, sweep, left swipe thing on uh, all the dating apps and things like that. So he starts to use sort of the things that he is seeing in them and... Jack and Hannah end up hooking up and there's no sex in this. There's not a lot of sex. There's some teasing that goes on. Um, so yeah, I think there's sex. Is there sex? I can't remember. Can't remember if there's sex, but I know there's a lot of teasing. Uh, I don't think there's, yeah, I'm just gonna leave it at that. But it was a really cute book. I really enjoyed it. I am looking forward to the next book, which follows another character from this one or secondary character from this one. And I think you guys should go check this out when it releases. That's right. It hasn't released yet. And it's not going to release until like November the 22nd, I think it is or something like that. I'll put that somewhere in here. Uh, yeah, so but definitely check this out when it comes out because it's super good loved it. And then the last book that I read last week was Fake Date by Monica Murphy. I placed this in Contemporary. I give it 3.5 stars. I give it 2.5 Steam fans. I read this one as an ARC for Reviewathon as well because I got it from NetGalley. And this is a slow burn frustrating fake dating story. Sarah is a lingerie seller and she has a constant appointment with Jared. Jared likes to come in and buy lingerie. Well, yeah, he has commitment and mommy issues. And she is taking care of her siblings because her parents have died. So the two of them are working together and he ends up needing a date to go to his brother's engagement party. So the two of them sort of do their thing and it was slow burn. It was frustrating. Like, really really frustrating and there really isn't that much sexy time in it until like the end which is why it got 2.5 stars because it almost didn't get very many stars at all whatsoever because it just wasn't sexy and yeah it, I'm sad I wanted this to be a little bit better this is the second book in the dating series and it had a mention of the character from the first book but it it really wasn't connected. So you could technically read this one by itself uh, and not have any worries that you didn't read the first book in the series. All right, on to what I am reading currently and what I'll be reading next week. So I am reading Always With You by Layla Hagen. And this story is about a guy that has had some PR problems. He's taken over the family business. This is the sixth book in like the Connor family series, I think it is or something like that. But so far, I'm not getting any vibes that I had to read the other books in the series to know what's going on. Um, I am enjoying this one so far. I received it as an audiobook review from a PR company. So I will be having this reviewed for you guys here in next week's video. Um, like I said before, I am doing a impromptu review-a-thon, so I am reading the books from my NetGalley, uh, dashboard, which are a lot, and I had some more come in. It's crazy. Um, and I don't know which route or how, uh, which ones I'm going to be doing. Um, just know that you guys will be seeing a whole bunch of books from Reviewathon. Um, I'm holding out on getting a copy of, or really like chomping at the bit, checking my Kindle app to see if I have gotten a copy of The Kingmaker by 
Kennedy Ryan yet because I could have swore I signed up for her art team to read it. Uh, and I'm kind of a little jealous because the last two days I've been seeing people reviewing it and I haven't gotten my copy yet. So I'm a little hurt and happy. Well, I'm a little sad, not hurt. A little sad that I haven't gotten my copy yet because she's one of those authors that I drop everything for to read her books and it comes out in like two weeks. So I kind of really want to get into that. Um, I have The Wise by Taryn Fisher that I want to really get into before the end of the month. I will also be starting the book that you guys have chosen for me over, uh, I let you guys decide which book that I read for the month of October. And um, right now, The Monster in His Eyes is winning. And I think I'm going to be reading this one. It has way more... Um, whatchamacallit, more votes. So if you go check that video out and there is actually a book out of the five that you want me to read more, get to voting, get your friends to vote uh, so that you can get the story that you guys want to, me to read done because I'll probably be starting that at the end of the week. So get to voting. Vote, vote, vote. Um, and I think that's it. There are, like I said, a lot of books on my NetGalley TBR or dashboard that I'll be getting to that you guys will be hearing about. Also, I'm getting a whole bunch of uh, books that are coming from the author specifically, like Roping Your Heart by Fabiola Francisco. This one comes out soon, and I hope to get to it, which, uh, yeah, come on now. This is the second book in the Everton I believe it is Everton series and it's about cowboys and music country. Yes. So many yeses. I love Fabiola. So <laughs> I can't wait to read this one. Can't wait. So that's it. That is the video. Have you read any of the books that I just named off? Do any of the books that I named off sound really good to you. Are you going to go check them out? Let me know down in the comment section. As I said before, if you want to contribute and uh, access or uh, help me provide you guys with more content, uh, the exclusive content for my Patreon, behind the scenes, vlogs, things like that, craziness, crazy thoughts will be over there. Check in the description box for that link. Also, make sure you check the description box if you want to jump around and see certain videos, see certain books that I talked about. Information down there, description box. It's always helpful. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, there is a feedback form down in the description box so you guys can help me improve my channel. Thank you for watching, and we will see you guys later. Mm -hmm.